in the encaustic in that, again, glaze layering or filling the incised lines technique that is, um, you know, pretty well recognized and known in encaustic. It's one of the core techniques. It's filling in those incised lines, and um, that's done with pigment stick, oil stick, oil bar, oil paint, um, and you could do that with the metallics. So I hope that that is self-explanatory. Uh, from there, we have a couple other options, of course, for, again, doing the, that glazing layer of metallic, and they are, woo, pan pastels, which, again, I've spoke on in the last few demos, if you want to get on YouTube and find those, as well as the iridescent and pearlescent jacquard um, pearlesque, pearl X pigments. I'm certain there are many, many other options out there if you want to get a metallic, but these are things that I have on hand and that I've used and that I share with my students in workshops. So it is what I've got to show, share with you. And I won't go into this particular technique to a great extent because, like I said, the um, pen pastel demos I've done in the last few weeks that are available on YouTube are going to work in exactly the same way when you're using the metallic in addition you know, the, the pan pastel, of course, is pastel, and in this case, metallic pastel in the pot form. These pan form, these uh, pearl X are a loose powder. So a little more, um, try to choose my words well here. I'm going to say dangerous, but that's not what I'm looking for. I lose my words when I'm trying to speak aloud. Uh, there's a disconnect between my brain and my mouth somehow. But for giving me that, um, what I'm trying to say is that they're messy. They'll, they'll be a bit messier than the pan pastel. They will, um, you know, you're going to get that loose pigment dust, if you will, going about the studio if you're not cautious. I tend to ask students to go outside and use them when we're working with these in studio, if I do it at all anymore in workshop. But you can see that particular gold is giving that surface a nice glittery shine. Now again, it is an added surface, it is an added layer I would have to fuse. As with the pen pastel, very much the same process. I'm trying to stick with the same somewhat tone here and go in gold copper again. Rich gold. I'll go ahead and add a little um, some of these pearlex, pearlesc pearlescent Colors, so you can get a different look at what that looks like. I wish the camera could pick up the glitz that this adds, but I have a feeling it's going to get lost in translation, but I'm doing it all the same. Let's see what comes across here. Those, those blend beautifully. That pearlescent violet with the gold, with the rich gold, is quite, quite lovely for a metallic. Hopefully you all can see that. Maybe it's translating through the camera. I'm not going to fuse. I think you all understand how to do that, but I would need to fuse and I can continue to build up layers of metallic should I choose to. One tip, and this is important throughout all metallics, you need to, okay, you don't need to. It is advised that when you use metallics in your encaustic that it is your final layer. In other words, I've created an entire composition and when I want a little bit of bling somewhere, I will let that be my final addition to the piece because putting wax over a metallic just deadens its shine. It, um, you know, it abolishes that glitz that we're all after. So it really does need to be that final layer. Hopefully that all makes perfect sense to you in translation again. So beautiful. That's the pen pastel or the Pearl X pigments that you can use for this effect. Moving on, my all-time favorite use of metallic or way to get a metallic is with transfer foils. Now these, uh, in, to the best of my knowledge, or what I say, are manufactured by the bookbinding industry, the, the, you know, the business cards, the letterhead, all of that kind of thing where metallic is used in that. It's a heat sensitive transfer paper. So in those processes, and I'm not going to get this right, I'm certain, <laughs> it is heat transferred, you know, through the letter press or what have you. Um, to the, to the paper or the book. Now for encaustic, the beauty of this is that it's, it's, a, contained, it's a contained and manageable um, metallic. So I don't have 
for instance, with the gold leaf, the leaf just fluttering away and making a mess around the studio or the, or the powders. And I can use it in a more deliberate way. That is, I'm going to put this foil down over the surface of my wax. This is a waxed encaustic board. I did this demo somewhere else along the wall line, and that's where I've got it. Um, this is silver, and then with a ball tip stylus, or what I even prefer is a ballpoint pen because that ballpoint rolls nicely over the surface of this and gives my um, gives the transfer. Uh, I might have to grab one. We'll see. Let's see if I can do it here. But this foil allows me to be very deliberate in my application of the metallic, so I can get beautiful lines. I can draw pictures. I can scribble. <laughs> Again, loss of translation between mouth and hand in this case. I can write, um, you know, transfer great verse, great verse to my painting. The wax is very cold, it's not transferring nearly to the extent it can. I like to have my wax at room temperature when I do this, not too warm, because if it is too warm, the ball tip stylus or the pen will simply mush the wax. And I'm not intending to do that. I only want to leave my lines behind, the transfer foil behind. So a little bit of silver, a little bit of black. Let's go for some really powerful thing. Now I have just little scraps of, of the foiling here, but I do sell this on my site in the shop in individual products. There's a, a big piece of seven, I believe, seven different colors in a pack. So you can check that out if you're interested. There's copper. And then, so that's line work. And for me, I'm catching the light so you can see the beautiful metallic of that. I don't know if it's getting across to you guys, but it is really fun to use because I can be so deliberate. I like to even put the foiling down, put a drawing I've done over it, and then trace that drawing. So I've got that drawing transferred through with the foiling. <laughs> Works a lot like Sorel transfer paper if you're aware of that product. One more way I love to use this foil. So that was a very deliberate application. Over texture, I can burnish this foiling. Sorry about the noise, disrupting the whole table. So I can burnish this, and what's happening is in the burnishing process, all those peaks of my. That showed up great. All those peaks of my um, painting, of my paint, are catching the foiling and it's transferring to it because that wax just wants to grab the, the foiling. And then all the valleys are, you know, leaving it behind. So I get a random application of that bling, a bit of copper and silver going on in that one. And you can see the copper here, it's just not as evident. I really should have done these in white. I love being enlightened to a better way as I'm in process of doing a demo. <laughs> that was sarcasm. All right, so two two ways to use the transfer foil is, foils, and I just think they're gorgeous. I often do come back with wax over these transfer foils when I do line work or writing or drawing simply because I still get the evidence of those lines um, and just a hint of that metallic, yet it pushes back the metallic. And for me, that's desirable effect. For you, maybe not. This one, I am gonna bring out my torch, but last but not least is actual foil. So in this case, I have gold foil, and there are a lot of foils out there, as I'm sure everyone is aware. I'm gonna have to warm this. It's not going to work in my cold living room teaching studio. All right, warm the surface with my torch real quick, and then I'll get down to business here. So the, the foiling is really great, first off, because it's so gorgeous. But for doing more random yet larger chunks, if you wanted to... Um, highlight an area with a great deal of, of metallic. As you can see, this is an incredibly more bold and um, vibrant example of, of a metallic on the surface than any of these other exam examples. It is, if you will, opaque. <laughs> it is an opaque foil or metallic evidenced in your painting rather than these more um, 
translucent layering or just the hint of it over the surface. So it works that way. But also, if you want to be, if you want to cover an entire area, let's see if I can pull this off. Um, this little incised rectangle I've got going on, I can fill that. And the beauty of this is that with traditional um, foiling, metallic foilings, gold foil, you do need the adhesive. You need the spray adhesive and there's more of a process to it. In this case, our adhesive is the encaustic paint, the encaustic wax. It's got enough um, grab to it <laughs> that it, it just takes hold of the um, takes hold of the foiling and keeps it in place as long as my surface is slightly warm and then through the magic of fusing once again that wax woo that's cool the wax underneath grabs that foil even more so and it is adhered to the surface once again I've created incredible masterpieces as the demo material here not but you get the idea, I hope. I hope you get the idea how simple it is for one, how effective it is to get the different metallics going on with encaustic painting, and how beautiful it can be to highlight areas. So heaps of fun. I really encourage you all to give it a try, even if you're not a bling person like myself. Um, I don't have diamonds. I don't have a lot of gold. I don't have... <laughs> I have string for a bracelet. Okay. You know, if you're not a bling person like myself, it can still be a lot of fun to use the material in your paintings to create an entirely different composition that, you know, you were unaware was going to be birthed for through you. How's that? <laughs> have fun with it. Saturday, this Saturday coming up, I will do a tour of my studio upstairs. I've been furiously working on it for a few weeks. Um, it's going to be a work